TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But we probably gonna be live tonight. I can't even count to you. We in the new crib. Good Wi-Fi. No interruptions. It's looking up, man. Anyway, let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Let's not forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on I don't know where I'm at in my intro. That's tough. Anyway, right behind me, this is where you can catch any highlights if we do go live and you miss it. Don't forget, we do got merch. Yeah, get me. And we also got Patreon. Um, so, so the people that did order merch, your merch will be sent out soon. But the the it's going to be down for a while, this site, actually. I don't even... So, negate what I just said. Don't even go look. Actually, it's still up right now, so... In a minute, it'll be down, though. Anyway, man, this is Window. Window, what's good with you, bro, man? You pumping out content like crazy, bro, man. Salute, man, for, you know, being the voice of the, the real voice of the people, the real voice of the people in need, man. Anyway, homeless crisis in England's poshest city. Where is that? London? Is London posh? Do we consider London posh? Anyway. Welcome to Bath, or if you're posher than me, Bath, generally accepted as one of the most well-to-do cities in the UK. Is in the UK. First of all, what is this? What is this? Is this a dam? Like, what's going on here? We in the UK or Italy? What's happening? I'm here today because a few months ago I came to this place and didn't realise there was such a large homeless problem as there actually is. It's surprising because it's seen as such a well-to-do, wealthy city. And there are people here that are struggling on the streets. You gotta give it up for the homeless though, man. Like they're smart, they're not dumb. They don't, they know where to go. Like a, it makes sense that they're here. They don't want to get robbed. They don't want to be messed with. So they come here. It's posh here. Ain't nobody going to... People just going to look, say say some posh stuff, and then keep walking. They ain't going to... They're not in a place where people are in need of what they got. They don't got to be worrying about watching over their back. You know, it's smart. It's a good move. It's the best move that they could possibly make. I think most people will agree that when they think of Bath, they think of amazing architecture and tourism and a very well-to-do city. The Roman baths there and the amazing Bath Abbey in front of me. But scarcely do I think of homeless people, people living on the streets and a homeless problem. What's your name, my love? Rainbow. What, say that again? Rainbow. Rainbow? Yeah, that's a beautiful yeah. name. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I had my child taken off me. The social services took my child and I never went back again. But they haven't got no homes for us. The night shelter you have to be referred to. It's £369 a week. It's a little pod that's as wide as me. It's got one bed and that's it. No, and a light. There's no no, no power part things. You can open the door with a fork. People are robbing each other. As far as I know, the night shelter's here, or at least in the Chicago, it was, it was like $15 a night this day. It, there was a cost for it. People are dying in there because they're selling drugs in there and the staff are just ignoring it. They just got a million pounds to refurbish it and all they did was the floor because they got to relocate. How long have you been on the streets in Bath? Since 1990. Really? Yeah. So you are... Um, a veteran. You're a veteran, yeah? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what life... Why does she have a tongue ring? Like, what's she... Okay. Is life on the streets in oh, Bath? Hard. They, t they call us tramps. Crackheads tell us to go and get a job, spit on us, set us on fire, piss on us, all sorts of things. But there's a lot of pretenders that pretend they're homeless, like the ones in town with their signs. They're not homeless at all. They've got homes. I keep getting told I'm a, uh, I'm, I've got a flat. If I had a flat, I wouldn't be dressed like this. I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrendous. The people are so judgmental because they're so rich and the, and the hierarchy, council, whatever you want to call them, don't want us. So that's interesting because a lot of people that, you know, live outside of Bath and aren't homeless here, they would think that, like, Bath would be a very safe and good place Hello. to be homeless. Gorgeous. But you, uh, you're saying that because it's so well-to-do, 
that you get treated with a lot of stigma. Yes. Yeah. yeah I get. That's crazy that she said that because I just said just now like they probably get looked at a certain way and maybe like. You know what I'm saying? But nobody's trying to rob them, but I guess they is. Um, really badly insulted by the police. They've told people I was an unfit dog owner. Where's the dog now? Have you not got your dog now? No, they took it off me. The police took your dog off you? Yeah, they took my dog off me, had him put down. Really? Yeah, because he bit someone. But I told the people, please don't touch the dog. Uh, I, I, I rescued him from uh, Wales because he was a mess. It was just a bundle of pee. And I cleaned him up and popped out a staffy cross patterdale, which was things like that. And I say, people, please don't bend over me, please don't touch him. No, he was all right, he'll bite me. No, and I've been bit by a dog there. Yes. Bit there. Yeah, yeah. I can see a little bit of a scar, yeah. Yeah, he got me there. Yeah. And yeah, but yesterday I made £1.50 because there's so many people around. You've got Romanians pretending to be homeless. You've got people with flats. And I say, you're taking the food out of our pockets. I see he cut that part when they got to talk about the pretending to be an homeless. I wonder what she had to say about that. They steal our stuff. I always get my stuff all stolen all the time. Do you sleep in the town centre or do you yeah. go out to safer no, places? I sleep, I sleep in... You know what's crazy? Window can... Window regularly gets 100,000 plus views on his videos. And he only has 28,000 subs. Like, that doesn't even make sense that people watch this man that much and won't hit the sub button. Like... Hit the sub button for the guy. Like, what are y'all doing? Y'all be tweaking sometimes, bro. And in, in, in town, I just sleep last night down the car park because there's all cameras, but they say they don't see. But they see other things. They see me shout. They have me arrested for shouting, but they don't see anyone attacking me. Being a, a lone female on yeah. the streets here, obviously, like, you know, that gentleman there. Yeah. Have you got, like, a group, a circle of people no, that you trust? No, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and they just rob each really? other. So you t try and you, you ride solo mostly, I heard that. yeah? Yeah, I try to, until I have a bit of money, and then I've got a posse. It's only when I've got a bit of money. Yeah, I only get £200 a fortnight, yeah. and now I have them following me, because I'm soft, and I care. He left that there so he could go in the shop. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm on my own most of the time. It's all right, I prefer to be on my own. So I got punched in the mouth. When was that? This was a couple of years ago. A guy was touching me up while I was asleep. So I woke really? up and I went, and I jumped up and went, what the f And he went, bam, straight in my mouth. Yeah. Was this another homeless person? No. Or this was a... Some guy. I some guy? Met, yeah, some guy. Just. You think they've been out drinking and well, all that? Yeah, some, some old... I don't know. I didn't even yeah, see well, him. Yeah. What type of weirdo is that? That's weird. Well, how down bad as a regular human being do you have to be to be drunk, can't get any, you know what I'm saying, and to go find a little homeless person? Like, that's weird. That is weird. I just you would have been up. confused because you just woke up. And then they call me a tramp or a crackhead and go and get a job. I'm like, and I don't care about not having a job, yeah? Right out, who's going to give me a job? I've done too long on the street. Do you know what I mean? Just give us a bit of attention. We're not all the same. We're not all on the street begging for drugs and alcohol. Some of us are just begging for just to get on and have some food. The people in the night shelter, they're robbing all the shops, Waitrose, Tesco's, Morrison's. I've, been, I've lived there loads of times. They let them feed off each other in there. If you go in there and you have a look, you'll see that it needs repairs. Yeah, it needs painting, it's got yeah. black mold. You've got to like be on a list for ages. They got what they call pods, yeah? Yep. And it's just a, a sh little cupboard with a bed in it, yeah? yeah. It's always fighting, yeah. it's always screaming. And I want to be one of those people that say it's better than sleeping on the hard concrete and the elements, but I don't know if it is better. You know what I'm saying? By the way they're making it sound, it's not. Arguing, it's not nice. Yeah. It smells. If you get it, the the the, um, the the fat, you know, the uh, extractor fan. If one person's ill, they all get ill. And there's 20 people in there. Hello. <laughs> I know you. Yeah, my my, my friend Sarah. If they ask me if I'm okay. I go living the dream. When you scratch just a tiny bit under the surface, you come to realise that homelessness rarely fits within the predefined stereotypes. A lone female living 30 plus years, a life of hardship on the streets of one of the UK's most well-to-do cities. I'm Brock. I'm not, uh, I'm Brock. not, hold Brock. on. Brock, nice hold to on. meet you, mate. So, I'm not even from the cap, man. After 30 years, at some point, it becomes a choice. Now, now y'all gonna think I'm wrong for this, but 
you a 30 year homeless veteran like and when I say veteran I don't mean war vet I mean you've been on the streets for 30 years you are a professional homeless person you are homeless for a living like is that not a choice like I say if you down bad you down on your luck you just need to like and I'm trying you know what I'm saying you can tr if you're trying at one thing for 30 years you're going to be great at it <laughs> Like if I'm if I'm out here trying my hardest to be housed or trying my hardest to switch my situation, like eventually it's going to switch. Thirty years, you're not trying. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't, you're not trying in thirty years. But she said it herself. I don't mind being home. It's like that's the attitude that you hear. It. She gave you the whole scenario. She don't care. 30 year vet. She's not trying to be home housed. She's not trying to switch that. Some people just like being free. Oh, you're on the streets. You're living on the streets here in Bath. Yeah. yeah. And what's life like on the streets here in Bath? Rough. Rough. A lot of people think of Bath as like quite a posh, well to do place. But... There's a lot of wealthy people. A lot of wealthy people. But everybody glides by. Okay. So do, I've heard this from other people I spoke to today. Because. There are so many wealthy people here, they're saying that they're ignoring the homeless more. It would seem like that. Yeah. It would seem like that, yeah, and definitely. How, how long have you been on the streets here? Um, 15 years. Really? I spoke to some people outside, but it's like the Christian place with the pods. Yeah, They yeah. house people. Oh, yeah, Julian House, yeah. And they've said that um, the conditions are not good there. I won't go in there. Their pods are smaller than a cell. Got, yeah. like, yay much room. They're bad, huh? Yes, you do, mate. Oh, very very much, thank you. So you were just saying, Brock, you don't drink? No, no, I don't drink, no, no. no. Gave up um, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. So 20 years off the booze on 20, the streets. Yeah, 2002, 21 years. Yeah, yeah so yeah. we were just saying off camera, me and Brock, that a lot of people stigmatise the homeless and, as, alcoholic, and, yeah. as alcoholics yeah. by default, just by looking yeah. at them. And then you sit here and I can tell by sitting and talking to Brock that he doesn't drink, no. that he's sober as a judge and has been for 20 years. Oh, so folks, don't jump to conclusions when you walk past people. Yep. Yeah. Hang on. Is there anything that you'd say to the people that watch just about how they should think, rethink about the homeless? Um, judge everybody individually. Take everybody as unique, I suppose. Cheers, man. No worries. Have All a good the best. Day. Have a good I would have to agree with that, man. You've got to take everybody as their own individual person because, you know, like, you know, especially in America, black people get judged by other black people's actions all the time and and like other cultures get judged by the other people and they think and, they, and then they get generalized instead of looking at the man instead of everybody you gotta look at the man the the, the woman you know what i'm saying no i, yeah. I agree my uh, name's kev kev nice to meet you i've mate. been homeless now for about two and a half years um to be honest homelessness in bass how can i explain it there's a massive divide, rich and poor. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just the way that Bath is. There isn't sort of any middle ground. Homelessness is kind of swept under the carpet, if you get what I mean. Do you think it's inconvenient for the, um, the tourist face of the town as well? Exactly that. I mean, the council went round um, a few months back, just literally clearing doorways and, and, and clearing up bedding that was left in doorways and stuff because it didn't look right. Yeah. For the for the tourist trade, it didn't work obviously because there's still a massive homeless crisis yeah. in back. I moved back from Oxford where I was working. But you can't even really like if this is Bath is like a tourist and they're, they're generating a lot of money from tourism. But at the same time, I do feel for y'all, man. That's just tough. That's tough. Y'all in the like y'all between a rock and a hard place. He's a chef. To look after my mum. The city is not helping. Bath is not the place y'all need to be there. We fell poorly, and I briefly moved in with her. You know, as as is, and she passed away, and then I was on the street, and that's how easy it is. And to Dang. try and get off the street when you're a single man with a bit of savings, you got to clear your savings first. Then it's going through the whole rigmarole of waiting lists and all that. There is nothing. You get a homeless shelter that will put you up for so many months. I heard about that too, especially as a man being homeless. It's my cat, I guess. You are in a room with no windows, no ventilation. Is that the one on Manvis Street? Yes. Yeah, with the pods. That's the one. So many people just die in those pods because they give up. Because it's registered charity, you're allowed to go in and, and, and look at that as a taxpayer. 
own and put a dog in there. Do you know what I mean? And I'd, I advise you to go and have a look. Go and have a look at one of these pods. Yeah. And you tell me if it's if it doesn't do wonders for your mental health. Yeah. I mean, it's, Wendell, it's, did you go look? I'm you, curious. If you're you got to go look. Suffering with depression because you're on the, you know, homeless as well. Get put in a in a, in a pod, mate. You might as well just give it. You are one you. one step away from being homeless. It's a missed mortgage payment. Yeah. It's someone breaking up with you. That's do you know what I mean? Give a thought to homeless. Don't just see them as, as, as rubbish on the street. You know Maybe just say? give a smile and a say hello. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because sometimes it's not about the money. It's crazy that bro said that because that's very true, bro. Like, never put yourself on nobody least, man. Make sure it's like you and that person. Because make sure you got some type of hold on the crib. Like, you can't just, you know what I'm saying? Let me and my girl get a crib and I'm not on the lease. Like, then you got all right to kick me out. But if I'm on that lease, if I feel like I ain't got nowhere to go, like, I'm not going nowhere. We both on here. Call the police. <laughs> I'm not leaving, YouTube. So I've just come back to the shelter to try and reach out to the staff and any management here that might talk to me and give their side of the story of how hard it must be for them to provide this service for the homeless people in Bath. Obviously this is a free of charge service for the people that use it that and it's mile. incredibly okay. difficult for them to keep on top of the hygiene and the conditions here. Unfortunately no one was available or willing to speak to me, they're a bit worried about speaking on camera but I did speak to a gentleman outside who was staying in the shelter and he's been very positive about his experience here. Basically yesterday I spoke to a lot of homeless people okay. and they were quite negative about the conditions here. So in order to get fair perspective, I thought I'd come here today. It's actually not too bad here yeah. actually. They got a brilliant cleaning crew in the morning. Yeah. They go right through it. I've been here four days and it's fine. Okay. If you get yourself in here, behave yourself, you're always fine. If you want the help of some kind of institution, there's always this some all, rules and regulations. This is all, this is all free, man. You're not, yeah. You're not paying for anything, so have a bit of respect. Certain individuals don't. Since I've been here four days, there's been, what, two, maybe three people who've been booted. So I've really been trying to get in touch with someone from Jew. And low key, man, I knew that was going to be the situation. Some people just been booted. Some people just can't go in there and do what they want to do. And they get thrown out or they can't get a bed because of previous experiences in there. And they mad. They hate them. You know what I'm saying? Situations like that, man, just do better. <laughs> Julian House, which is the company that runs the Manvers Street Hostel with the pods in, which keeps coming up in conversations with basically everybody that I talk to. I've very kindly been given the number for a lady called Helen, and Helen is the CEO of Julian's House. We've been running the, the hostel down there for a number of decades. It is quite a small confined space, um, accommodating 20 adults, um, but it's used as emergency accommodation for the shortest period as possible. One of the things that came up when I spoke to homeless people who were critical was the pods and the size of the pods. We had the hostel re furbished and reconfigured to create these more individual spaces to afford people more privacy yep. and dignity. Um, but it's not ideal. The, the, the rooms are incredibly small and for only really suitable for the short term. Yeah. Short -term. Use, emergency use which is what they're intended for yeah it's intended for short term like like you're not supposed to come in here and be making it a home come in here get out the streets for a little bit you know see how what you can make shake and then go you don't want nobody to come in here and get complacent and be living in here man be uncomfortable uncomfortable if you're uncomfortable you're gonna be more likely to get the job done you're going to be more likely to change your situation. You know what I'm saying? Un the most uncomfortable I could be is out on the street, period. I'm in a hostel. I don't care if it's, t what, 10 by 10, 7 by 7. I'm in somewhere. I got heat. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's just how I completely I understand that there are some huge logistical challenges that an organization like yours must face. So as an update, to the day's journalistic inquiries. So I've been given the go ahead to go into the shelter and to take a look at these pods, 
apparently because it's a registered window i swear every video like every time i i think this is my third video I watch a window like every time it gets better and better you're going deeper and deeper and that's how it's supposed to be you gradually get greater at what you're doing man this is tough he going in he can call people like it's tough it's a charity i am allowed like all members of the public are with an appointment to go and look at these pods Question, what is the best e-commerce business to start today? Is it drop shipping from China and selling on Shopify? Long delivery time, low margins. This is the med center. We have a doctor in twice a week and a nurse in three times a week in the morning. This is the mixed area. So we've got eight in here. Yeah, they are small, but like I said before to you, this is emergency accommodation. Right, now this is a pod. This one's empty, yeah? Yeah, this one's empty. This is ready to go. So this will be full to No cap, they were not lying. But this is emergency combinations. You're not supposed to be here like more than a few days. But this is smaller than a jail cell. Literally smaller than a jail cell. But like you're just supposed to sleep in here, really. Sleep in here, you ain't supposed to be in here like trying to do a Zumba, Zumba class, like, go to sleep, wake up. There's probably a shower somewhere. There's probably a day room. There's probably some different rooms where you can, you know what I'm saying? But, like, this is wild. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, but to sleep, I'm, I'd sleep in here if it was down bad. Tonight, yeah? This will be fun. And this will house one person or two? One. One. And what's the top bunk for? Um, that's just a shelf. Like, to put, put their legs on, yeah. You you like, have air conditioning. Yeah. You see the the central air. That goes on. That's on all the time. So do the people that are, are housed here temporarily, do they have to leave during the day? No. Or this is their home while they're here? This is their home while they're here. Do they have facilities to cook as well? No, we cook for them. We cook okay. three meals a day. How long's the waiting list for these pods? At the moment, there is a way. This is jail. I ain't gonna lie, like, I know what it's there for, it's free, it's just to get homeless people off the street, but like, this is jail. They serve you your food, three meals a day, a little room, it's built for how many people can we hold in here. It's built for, let's keep track of how many people who've been here a year at one time and let's get the grant money type situation. In this piece what it in the winter, like. uh, usually we have free pods in the summer and the, 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 the lighter. Yeah, it's free, but like for the, like when you're going to go get your grants because it's free, like it ain't, it's free to them, but you're still getting, free, you're also getting free money. So. Nights, they tend to choose to stay out in the evening and they're not bothered about coming in. But now it's getting colder, they all want to come in. So yeah. there is a waiting list at the moment. You're happy for me to have filmed that without your yes. facing? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to show the people, people have been speaking about them. And this that is, is the pod yes. people speak about. Yes. It's a little bit, honestly, I'll say it as I see it, it's a little bit bigger than I was given the impression by the people that were speaking. I swear, to, no it's not. No it's not, Wendell. You, you gaslighting this man. It is not a little bit bigger. Bro said it's smaller than a jail cell. And this is smaller than a jail cell. Speaking negatively about them. So one of the challenges was security and privacy. But I still wouldn't be speaking negatively about it. Like, I'd be in here if, if needed. Ever say, yeah. And this was the solution. Yeah. I'm not hungry. I'm not nothing. I got a shower. I got free. Like, I'm good. How many showers are there? Two, yeah? Well, there's, there's uh, two here. And then we've got a shower in the women's area and a toilet in the women's area as yeah. well. So it's three showers yeah. altogether. The food is you know, fairly basic. It's not a la carte. Loads of soups, pulses. Yeah. I'll be honest with you again, Rory, I've worked in hospitality uh, for a lot of my life and this is a cleaner kitchen yeah. than most of those kitchens. Yeah. Just wanted to show. Oh yeah, window, me too, man. I've been, I've worked um, 10 years in hotel business. Was it 10? Nah, it wasn't 10. It was like seven, eight. What the reality was. If yeah. I ever had to go back to work, I would go back to the hotel business. Just not that brand of hotel that I was at. I was at the Marriott. No offense to the Marriott, but like, man, y'all had some bad apples where I was. They was they was being real, you know, not racist, but they were being like, they only wanted certain people to advance, and I ain't really with that. If I'm doing the job, if I'm working hard, like, yo. Let's see that's the thing though like it is a certain thing like you can be too good at your position and they will not give you the opportunity to, to elevate yourself because they want you right there they will give you to spin around and spin around and spin around and spin around that's what they was doing 
I was too good at what I was doing. I was front desk. I was the face you see when you walk in. And you know what I'm saying? You get me? Like, I understand. I get it. But like, come on now. Of the inside yeah. of this shelter, because it's come up in every single conversation I've had. Sometimes people are really positive, sometimes people are negative about it. Okay. I've come in, it's clean, it's calm. It's always clean. And you guys are doing your best. Yeah, we do our best. That's why we work in this, in this field. Of, of course, mate, yeah. Yeah, this, this is why we do it. We don't do it for the money, put that way. I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> so I've just met this gentleman who is staying at the shelter at the moment and he's got nothing but positive things to say about it i've been on the streets that's what i'm saying if i had no choice like and i've been on the streets for, the, for a long time like i'm going in here i'm chilling five years i've i've been in doorways being kicked by police i've had all sorts and it's beautiful honestly it's you get food a roof the, the staff are lovely honestly they've sorted me right out breakfast lunch dinner you get a pod i know small but it's 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 got ventilation honestly the staff are amazing yeah they are amazing i appreciate it i appreciate yeah, you sharing your story for me yeah. so there you go folks eventually i managed to get permission to briefly film a short tour of the site there at the shelter the manager let me do it it's quite a clean environment it seems quite well organized and the pods when they're made up initially they seem quite sheltered quite safe and small but for some people better than being on the streets the picture that i'm for me that would be better managing to come across now that's emerging is that some people they just aren't really um happy to play by rules and regulations which are See? necessary to See? keep law and order some people just don't like the rules and the regulation and they got something bad to say now like that's uh, what i thought and to keep it all running smoothly they'd much prefer the more lawless non-conformist lifestyle the free. of the streets thanks for joining me on this one i salute window man I, I mean window i appreciate this man this is a, actually you want a deep dive this is nice probably one of the best videos i've watched from you i'm gone